to the Kanchen. To join me this week, we have an action-packed panel with Oscar, with Taps. We're going to discuss the Madrid Derby, the preview of Clasico, and also preview Barcelona's failure in the Europe League. Uh, that was pretty sad, but let's start with the Madrid Derby. And Wow, what can you say about this Derby task? Because honestly, it was a very boring game to start in the first half. Nothing really happened, but then... After this incident, when I know Korea gets a red card, it just sprang up to life, didn't it? Yeah, I think the derby actually came alive earlier than that a little bit. Um, when Korea actually came on, I think Atleti switched formation because I don't know if they were playing like a, a 4 5 1 or something when Reynildo was still on. But when Korea came on, they started actually showing some attacking owners. Korea was making a lot of good runs. Uh, going into spaces and Griezmann was no longer isolated so we started seeing a lot more from Atleti but then yeah then we had the the sending <laughs> off which then like sort of just put turn the game on his head a little bit I, I want to get your opinion from a Madrid fan because like for me seeing this and if if that's a red card every single corner has a red card situation in it yeah, no, so the thing with these ones, they're annoying because I've seen them given in La Liga several times, but personally, I would never give them because it's just handbags, right? So like you're saying, in corner kicks, we see it on free kicks, we see it in like so many situations. If I was a ref, I would just first give you a verbal warning. Yeah. And then if you keep doing it again, then I give you a yellow card. Then if you do it a third time as a third strike, then I'd give you the red card. I wouldn't immediately give you a red because even um this weekend in the Spurs Chelsea we saw ZH get a similar situation I think ZH was um there was like a scuffle with like Havertz and the Chelsea players and ZH was involved in there and then that referee gave ZH a red card but then he went over to VAR looked over the scuffle again realized his mistake although it took them like three to five minutes to get it fixed then he rescinded the red card and switched it to yellow so I feel like that should have happened in this game but unfortunately with the Liga refs as soon as they make a decision it's rare that they'll u-turn on, on their existing decision even when they go look at it on bar yeah that's the problem with the refs in la liga and like just the refereeing in general we saw controversy in elche we'll get onto that but there are 94 red cards in the spanish league this season more than every other league every other top five league like and we compare that with the premier league in england and i think there's 17 red cards and yeah, I don't, it's I don't almost think, like four or five times every other league. Yeah, I don't think there's a big difference in the physicality or the aggression in La Liga. Exactly. It's, it's not even, the league isn't dirtier. It's just that the refs are more willing. They they don't do like a three-strike system, right? Yeah. The minute you do something or the minute you talk back, the ref's not going to give you a yellow. He's immediately just going to give you a red, no warning, no nothing. So you just have this mass <laughs> number of red cards coming in. Yeah, especially like a, like the ones on the benches where it's like the guy was just like mouthing off on the bench and all of a sudden you see the ref run in and sprints to give the red card. And I'm just like, how how does that happen? Yeah, it's, it's so confusing because like, you, and I'll keep dwelling on this. I feel like they should, if they just give warnings, you're able to like control the game and yeah. stamp your authority without then giving a red card. Because then if someone continues to... Uh, cross the line then you give them a yellow and a red but you yeah. at least give them a courtesy warning yeah because the, the one like to get off this game for a moment the one thing that this reminds me of, i remember that Sergio leon by the lead incident right and that was poor referee management no matter what Sergio leon said he was just about to go off he might have been mouthing off the referee was so far away and if he's insulting the referee when the referee can't hear it then why should a, a fourth official tell the referee that Hey, this bloke just insulted you. Give him a red card. Exactly, and and he was about to be subbed off as well. So he yeah. gets a red card when he's on his way. like it's so because I can understand it. That's the thing. Like giving a red card for that is not inherently wrong, but like you only do that after it becomes a persistent problem. You don't yeah. do it as like a first option. True, true. But let's get back in. Let's get back to the game. And after the red card. Like to give credit to Atleti, they they played better at, with ten men <laughs> at some point. And yeah, got Atleti the pushed on. They were actually attacking a lot. Like for the first half, they didn't have a single threat on. I think their first shot uh, at Courtois came with like the Griezmann at the edge of the box shot, and that was in the second half. But yeah. then when the red card was there, Jimenez came on. They were attacking really well, and then we saw the the set piece goal. 
Oh, He's yeah. really, really good taking header. Yeah, like Atleti's corners in the header these days are rare, to be honest. <laughs> but after that, you felt like Atleti would go forward, like they would defend, they would do really well, and then Alvaro Rodriguez happened. Yeah. <laughs> Again, he was unmarked uh, unmarked in the box. I don't know why Atleti players did similar to like what the Liverpool players did with Militao. It's like the the runner that was actually supposed to be tracking yeah, Alvaro just didn't watch him. And, yeah. <laughs> and he towered, to be fair, because his, his jump was really good, but like he was uncontested in front of him, so he had yeah. to put it away. Yeah, he becomes the first player to score in his Madrid, like the youngest player to score in his Madrid Derby debut since Raul. And the celebration is similar to when Raul scores in his Madrid Derby debut at the Bernabeu. So, like, those, like, immediately I saw that goal and I saw the celebration. I was like, they're going to make the comparison with Raul. And <laughs> slowly but surely, Marco did make the comparison with Raul because, like, like he's been really special. He, in, in his first game against Osuna, he comes on and gives an assist. It comes on in this game, shows like the charisma to to get a goal. Like it's it's really good showing from him. Yeah, I think he's been he's been really good, especially like his just ability to bounce back. Because like you're saying in the Osasuna game, he initially gave an assist that was offside, and he just kept going on and on and on. He's very like proactive, if I could use that word. Whenever he yeah. comes on, yeah, he's really proactive. And let's talk about the Champions League because Madrid they were in action there and. After the t- Liverpool went up 2-0, what were your emotions, Taps? I was I was pretty calm. Um, you were? <laughs> yeah. Um, if only I had the receipts uh, in the Twitter group. <laughs> I actually mentioned in the Twitter group when, when Gav, La Liga Gav, asked me about the scoreline. And I was like, we'll either win narrowly or we'll draw the game. And I literally said that as we were 2-0 down. Not because I was overconfident, but because I know Madrid in the Champions League, we just we show a different level of fight. And I was like, at the very minimum, we're going to leave with 2-2. So I did not, like, I did not see the 5-2 coming. Uh, admittedly, I didn't even think we'd win. But I thought at the very least that we would leave Anfield with at least a 2-2 and then we take it back to the Santiago Bernabeu. And it's it funny because you mentioned that, like, oh, it's Madrid in the Champions League. There must mm-hmm. be something else, though. It's like, because I, I asked Oscar last week about how this game was going to go. And it was like, Obviously, Madrid's going to do well because it's Madrid in Champions League. And maybe sometimes it's just Madrid in Champions League because if you're 2-0 down at Anfield and like you're creating chances and then the goalkeeper makes that mistake, maybe there's something about this club in the Champions League because someone yeah. has been this to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like At this point, we don't know if it's just aura, mentality. There's just, uh, I think even, uh, what's his name, Julio Baptista was interviewed before the game. And he was referencing the Man City comeback. And he was like, you could tell after Madrid scored the first goal that Manchester City players were just thinking, not again, not again. <laughs> and I think that's what happened to Liverpool because after the f- first goal went in, you could tell the defenders slightly had their heads down. Yeah. Then you get the second goal with the mistake. Then the one that told me that Liverpool had completely switched off was the Militao header because he had like five people in front of him and none of them actually tracked the runner and they were just watching him. And yeah, yeah. I don't was, know what it is. <laughs> I can't explain it. Yeah, and the fifth goal was so sensational. The pass, the run from Luka Modric, we, we forget, like, he was Asian. He was, he was in, almost in his 40s, which is old. He needs and... to be drug tested. <laughs> <laughs> <At this point. laughs> and even the way that Vinicius passes to Benzema, Benzema finishes it, Benzema got two goals, <laughs> surprisingly, and Vinicius, like, Liverpool is, is he owns that club right now. Five goals in four games against them. Yeah, he always he always performs against them. Partly because again he's going up against Trent, and that's not necessarily <laughs> a knock on Trent because it's a knock, man. No, no, it's, <laughs> no, 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 it's not a knock. Because I was gonna say right, Trent is really good going forward, but the gaps that he leaves in defense means that Liverpool always have to compensate on that right side. And so if they don't compensate, you're leaving a clear path for Vinny. So, like, I don't blame Trent. I blame the coach. Because remember, I brought this example up with Marcelo or Marcus Alonso. As a coach, if you know that this is the type of defender I have, then you have to make that compensation for the defender or else you're just leaving the defender out to dry. So you kind of have to, I blame Klopp for every time <laughs> that Vinny just kills Trent on that way. 
Oh, yeah. So now we've spoken about the good about Spanish football in Europe. Let's talk about the bad. Ah, Oscar, what, what went wrong in, in Manchester? Um, well, we have to congratulate my United. that they really showed their face in the second half and played well. I thought we played well in the first half of the game, but then besides the penalty, we did not do much to test that with the hair. I think that's what lost us that match because when we were dominant, we couldn't convert that dominance into chances. Like I said, there was little to no creativity. And then the second half, when we didn't have a good period, they took their chances. So that's why we lost that game. Yeah, you mentioned the second half, right? When I was watching this game, with the first 15 minutes of the second half, you could tell that the momentum had changed. Mm-hmm. And from a from a Barcelona perspective, I think the blame has to go to Xavi because if this was Coleman, if this was Valverde or Setien, everyone would be on, on their necks. But in that moment, in that spell, that was the time to make the, the changes. And Xavi was so slow in making the changes. And I feel it just allowed Manchester United's momentum to grow and to grow and to grow. And once they got that first goal, you could tell like the entire atmosphere in the stadium changed and mm-hmm. the feeling of the club changed and United were on the up and Xavi did nothing to stop that. Yeah. As for the changes, that's something we need to talk about because I felt at some point the foreman midfield was not really working because they brought Anthony on and went to like a normal 4 formation. formation. That's, that's another thing that also contributed to the dominance they had plus the goal. So I expected Xavi to react faster and give us a presence on the left-hand side. Yeah, because the left-hand side was just Baldi. And um, a lot of times Barca were like, they were dragged onto the right-hand side of their mm-hmm. attack. And yeah. most of the times, whenever they wanted to cross it to the left-hand side, Baldi had such a disadvantage in getting there. And you just put a lot of pressure on that kid. Yeah. Honestly, I think... The four-man midfield system has its good things, but I feel like some of the downsides is, number one, I feel like it has affected Levy a bit, and number two, it doesn't work as well without Petri. So I felt he should have been more flexible, but yeah, personally, I was not mad about the results. But <laughs> as it is. Yeah, we were more mad about... So, Yes, Almeria did it against Barcelona. The first win against Barcelona in history. Mm-hmm. How did this happen? Again, that <laughs> lack of creativity problem. Do you have those sound effects I asked for already? They might be killing my company. Oh, my God. 47 crosses. <laughs> to be fair, so... <laughs> To be fair, so the crosses were actually good. Like I'll 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 give a friend Ferrante has put some good crosses in, but then the finishers let him down. Yeah, yeah. If Ferran, even in the United game, Ferran put in a beautiful cross that I think three Barcelona players missed, like Lewandowski missed, Kunde missed, and uh Ansu Fati missed. And you mentioned mm-hmm. creativity, but I'm gonna push you on that because didn't Girona put six past these guys last week? God, I'm even angry now. I forgot about <laughs> they've considered nine goals in their last two games. We <laughs> only, had, only had one shot on target. One shot on target. And it came from an 18-year-old in the 80-something minute. <laughs> oh, my God. To defend Barca a little bit here, I think the way Almeria would approach both games is slightly different. So Yeah. Yeah. True. I mean, I could talk about the fact that five of the eight league goals we've considered this season have come when Eric Garcia is on the pitch, but there's no point talking about that. That's not the main problem. The main problem is I, we also have to give Almeria their dues. They, t- they were excellent and in how they like both nullified us and especially how they counterattacked. But in terms of nullifying us, we made it too easy for them by just coming central so much. It was kind of like the problem Real Madrid had with Atleti when they had 10 men. Like, they were just coming central too much instead of 
stretching the pitch. Yeah, and then, boy. yeah, with us, and even when people had chances, they were just messing them up. So, all in all, I guess given we were due a loss at some point, so at least it's happened now. Maybe yeah. you think maybe that will like be okay. Let's just move on. But then, more bad news. Lewandowski <laughs> <laughs> went off injured. But I, he's not available for the next game. Yeah, I wake up this morning. I look at my phone. I see Lewandowski injured. I laugh and sleep back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. To be honest, that might not be a bad thing. The next game is El Clasico, though. I'll explain. Yeah. It might not be a bad thing because, to be honest, Levy has been kind of out of sorts recently. That is true. So I maybe <laughs> an enforced rest might do him the world of good. So I'm saying in the long term it might be good for him. But who's, on, who, who's the front lead now? Because On Thursday, yeah. <laughs> Aranso is going to be back for Madrid. You just had like a bone bruising. Okay. So the front tree picks itself. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Javi wants to go with four midfielders, which I, I don't think is a good idea without Pedri. Yeah, but it's, it's, given, given what we've discussed about Barcelona and the attitude that showed in Manchester, here you might say they were a bit, um, they created, they had a lot of crosses, but they couldn't convert. It's like, if Barca plays any way similar to what Liverpool did, you might see a, like a bad scoreline or something. Or no, well, no, no, we, we, ne- we didn't play that bad. No, don't get me wrong, I'm angry, but yeah, <laughs> I mean to play to play as like Liverpool played is just <laughs> <laughs> that's a different kettle of fish. <laughs> yeah. Nah, don't worry. There's no way. That and, 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 and I'll also say this. The reason why I'm not too scared of Real Madrid on Thursday is because of the crucial fact that they're missing Rodrigo. If he was playing, <laughs> I'd be too scared to come on this pod right now. <laughs> but it is that they also have some injuries up front. So that's why I'm like, if we can escape the Bernabeu with a draw, I'll be over the moon. Yeah. If we, at least our defenders are fully fit, our midfield, may God help us. And then, no, our midfield, we'll see. And then our attack, may God help us. <laughs> but the thing with the Classico, isn't that Barca actually has a better record at the Bernabeu than the Camp Nou? So. Yeah, that, that is very true. Yeah. <laughs> if we are to lose one of the Classicos, I think we'd rather lose, we'll lose the Bernabeu one and then maybe yeah. win in the Camp Nou. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with you, Taps. Like, what do you think this result says about the title race and about what's going to happen on Thursday? I don't think it says anything. It's just, it's like a, a little damage wake up call for Barcelona, but they're still like, what, seven, six, seven points ahead. It's yeah. not going to change anything because in Madrid right now, of course, we're still <clears throat> thinking about chasing the title, but we know realistically Barcelona has to slip up like two, three times and we can only influence one of those slip ups. So I think kind of like with the whole Arsenal Man City thing where Man City just knew that, you know, someone else is going to have to beat Arsenal. All they can do is beat Arsenal to hit them with a a little dent in confidence. So I think maybe if we win the Clasico and close the gap a little bit and then Barcelona drop another game, then it's tied along. But until then, it's it's in Barca's hands right now. Yeah, to to go back to the Derby, isn't there like feeling of a missed opportunity there? Like I know no one could have, Foreseen the scoreline, I couldn't foresee the scoreline. I'm really at least in Barcelona, but yeah, if Madrid had won the derby, especially the fact that they're playing against 10 men, um, it would have been five points right now. And you can see Barca drawing the odd game, yeah. I think, I think five points is still it's still big. Yeah. I think anything that's above three is not really gonna now, the, wake the us I, up a little bit. The reason I say five points isn't that big is because like Barca could draw potentially, let's say, to Rayo or something. Because Rai is a good team. And if they but draw, the thing is, we are points. guaranteed to drop points elsewhere. Trust true, me. <laughs> true, true. But, but, but when, it, when it comes down to three points, then it's... Yeah, Madrid that's, that's why it's, once it's three points, I think we'll start sniffing blood. But if it doesn't get to three points, it, it's whatever. For... Yeah. And, and for Thursday? 
And yeah, for Thursday, I like I said, we don't really have a good record in the Brenner Bale Classico, so I'm always kind of wary of those ones. I always chalk it up as like a draw or a loss and then worry about what happens at the Cup now. So I think if if you ask me what I would want right now, I would take a 2-2 two, two draw going into that. 2-2 two, two draw. Oscar? Yeah. Given the amount of players we're going to be missing, I guess Real Madrid on Thursday. I don't think the history of like us doing better at the Bernabeu is going to help us. So unless Fati stops doing air shots, Rafinha stops thinking he's Ronaldinho, <laughs> I think we're going to lose. We're going to lose. Oh, damn. Buckingham. Fortunately, I think we'll lose and then maybe when people come back, we can try and come back at home. <laughs> Uh, both of you don't sound too confident for that, but <laughs> I'm not that man. In, the camp now. Oh. in the camp now, I think we'll win. Like yeah. there, I can guarantee that one. Yeah. And sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it, it is very good right now. You might get demonetized, man. Guys got to so smart. No, no, no. This game, this game, but tears my eyes because it's like Ad- Addison Valencia wins <laughs> since, <laughs> since the World Cup. But then it's starting Catalan and fail to do their job and you're yeah, still in the relegation. Still, still in the relegation. I'm sorry for that. No, no, it, it is what it is. But it's like yeah, like I feel I feel it's been getting better for Valencia in terms of performance, but it's just the, the results were just not coming and to get to get this result from an own goal. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I, that's what it that, takes that, that, to get that's what, the results. That's what it takes, yeah. And it's like see the emotions of like Hugo Duro who was crying after the game. Like I feel, I feel Lino played his heart out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and obviously with Baraha coming in, I I don't I don't have much faith in him. But there's when you're in a relegation zone and you're in a relegation battle, <laughs> you, you have to be positive. <laughs> there's there's nothing you can't be negative anymore because there's nothing else like. To be, you're not going to kill yourself, but like you just have to like hope for the best, and and it's I, I feel it's a good result, but the the problem is the next game is at the Camp Nou against Barcelona, so it's in my don't opinion. worry, we <laughs> have to, listen, we have too many absences for you. How are you scared of Sergio Roberto? Answer question, man. Answer question. Like no, he, no. he loves scoring against Valencia. He used to love scoring too, but he can't do that <laughs> anymore. But, well, well, anyway, that aside, yeah, it's a really good win for Valencia. And even though they didn't move too far up the table, it's still nonetheless a huge boost because, like you said, it's been 84 years since the last <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. But, but what a Real Sociedad, though, because like they have the form is on the parts like yeah they've got yeah. no wins in five right yeah mm-hmm. yeah and it, it makes actually the- one win in five but they almost that blew that win <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes champions league race like super exciting now because Betis... i'm so scared for them man yeah, I, yeah. they were so this feels like groundhog day because <laughs> when they were so comfortable and then they just you, you know the problem Having a Canarian island midfielder is so invaluable because when you lose them, you look <laughs> like a completely different team. I would do. Yeah, it, it's it, it's weird because like normally they have to slip up in November, and mm-hmm. we're like because the World Cup was in November, we didn't really see them slip up. But yeah. now <laughs> the law of averages. And this is the time where I didn't expect for us that slip up because. The Europa League is coming soon, and they have Roma in the Europa League, which is going to be difficult. But yeah. they've not really had to play in Europe re- recently. And you would have expected them to pick up a lot of wins and then slip up when the Europa League comes. But now it's more difficult. Maybe the opposite will happen. <laughs> yeah. This part is a crazy spot. Yeah. yeah, Taps, you're about to say something about Roma not being that difficult. Oh no no! I was saying that's going to be a very good, a good yeah. Game. Roma are hit and miss, but again, Mourinho Cup competitions, he'll he'll find a way. Yeah, Betis also have a really really tough draw in the Europa League against Manchester United, and they lost Nabil Fakir today. But the good news for them is that with the help of the referees, they're back in the Champions League race because 
I don't know. Can someone explain to me what the hell happened in this game? Because the referee mm-hmm. just went wild. Yeah, like this. Let's start with Alessandro Magalan sending off. I don't agree with that. No, like, yeah. yeah, see, that was yes, it's a handball, but give him a warning. Yeah, don't give him a get, right? at most. Oh, these referees have no sense, man. I mean, LJ did not help with some of their tackles at hand, but that particular one is what changed the game. Yeah. So I'm like, because I, I guess the referee gave him the card because it's he's like he would have been the last man, and it's a denial of. A go- I don't think it's a denial of goal scoring opportunity to be honest. Like it, because Berkir was still running further away from the goal, mm-hmm. so that's that's why it doesn't make sense. Yes, Magalan was the last man, but I think in FIFA, like they've done away with that triple part of their role. Yeah, give just give him a yellow and keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, after the career red card, is there anything else left to be surprised by? <laughs> no, no, it isn't. This in, in terms of this season, I'll I'll say it's it's pro- it's given good football recently, but the refereeing performances are just like a drag on this league for mm-hmm. since the start of I'll say for the since the pandemic years they've gotten really bad like really really bad that it makes a lot of the games like somewhat if you're neutral and you see this happening you, you yeah you want to turn off the game because and their games are a lot of stop start as well because we're not getting a lot of ball in play time cause yeah it's every foul is being called so yeah there's no <laughs> there's no like advantage or play out or anything like that yeah and think of this if you're watching this as neutral and you hear about LK struggles and what they've been going through and you see them to get again the big results against Betis and you're super excited and you see how they get like stuffed by a bad referee performance and that just I guess turns people the wrong way from in my opinion. It turns me the wrong way for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But let's let's talk about the good news for Betis. They got a late penalty, they converted it, they're back in the Champions League race. They have it's in their hands, to be honest, because they have to play Atleti and they have to play Real Sociedad. But the good thing for Betis compared to Real Sociedad is Betis have Real Sociedad at home. Um, Atleti have Real Sociedad at home. So Real Sociedad, they have to go away to Atleti and to Betis. And do we think now that Betis have the advantage over Real Sociedad, at least for top four? To be honest, I don't think anyone has an advantage except <laughs> I Atleti. I don't trust either. And Atleti's advantage is by virtue of not having European games. Because <laughs> it's hard to trust any of these teams at this point. <laughs> no, it, it really is. And, but with Betis, though, we can say that they're getting better to what they did best on the Pellegrini at, or at mm-hmm. the bad of Setien in that they're scoring more goals. They're also conceding more goals. But mm-hmm. the games are really exciting. Like I think they're challenging Girona for the most exciting team in the league. Yeah, they're back to their brilliant best <laughs> and their terrible worst. You know, they are just combined different eras, like you said. And it's fun to watch. It's just, I wonder how much Fekir's injury is going to affect things. And Canales, Canales is injured too, but I don't think, I don't know when he's coming back, but you know, with Real Madrid coming up, that it's not ideal to have put of them out. Sure, sure. I guess it's, it can be an opportunity for someone like Rodri, who's been quietly having a good season. Yeah, and Luis Enrique from Brazil is also like doing super well. And I, I do worry for them against Manchester United because it's a different Manchester United than years years gone by, where where Honestly. there was somewhat there was somewhat an achievable opponent for Spanish clubs. Yeah. But and now yeah, I like, worry for their defense. since Ronaldo yeah. left, they've just. <laughs> Like when I remember the group chat when we got my United, you guys remember what I said? I was yeah. laughing. I was like 10 nil, like we just dog walk Ronaldo. You know, he left and now they're a serious team. So, yeah, I think yeah. Betis man gets it's be hard yeah, to win. Well, if they do win, great, but I don't see it. Yeah, Unless yeah. Rashford is conveniently yeah. sick. <laughs> It'll be really hard for Rob Betis. Speaking of Kike Setien, like he is very Real got back to winning ways. Um, after four four winless games. Um, in the first half, I was a bit worried because Getafe were winning, and I was worried for Kike, but I was also worried for Valencia. And I was like, Kike HDP. I'm not gonna say what that means in our in a. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but it but it did get back to winning ways. And I was speaking to our VRL friend Norbert, and he's not he's not very happy with the game. You have to take this one, Tops. I feel like I'm a bit biased towards Kiki, so we need a neutral uh, person. The thing is, I didn't watch this game, so I can't really comment on okay. the game itself, unfortunately. So, but I'll have I can that. stay with Kiki, right? I still I'll maintain what I said last year in November. I don't think he was the right appointment, but he has done better than I expected him to do. So I, I will give him that. Yeah, Oscar? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Trickwazy, you know, he's the one thing Kiki has done very well is get the best out of Trickwazy. So yeah. I'll give him that. And he turned the game around for them today. And I'll also actually be fair to him because the squad is weaker than it was in the than going into January. I don't know how much of that is his doing. So I'll just leave that. And we all know that this team is a completely different team without Gerard Mourinho. And even with him sometimes this team they've been kind of iffy but so and uh, getting this win you know is a good step in the right direction. Yeah, Otherwise he would have been sucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, step in the right direction indeed. And his fellow um, counterpart, Kike, like, the, and Katape, they've, been, they've improved. They, they're, like, doing well despite the rumors in the squad. And NSU now keeps on banging in the goals recently. Yeah. I mean, they put up a good fight. And I, I like how, like, he's made these formations more forward-thinking now even though he's having to play Janiat right back. I think he could do better there, but they're trying to, like, get themselves into better goal-scoring opportunities now, which has been their struggle all season. Because at FA, if you notice, they only lose games by the odd goal. They don't really get hammered, yeah. besides Valencia hammering them. But, you know, I think he st- he has there's enough in the squad to stay up. Yeah, yeah there is. And speaking about struggling for goals. One team that doesn't is Girona. And Girona, they, they got the rub of the grin in this game because, first of all, Alex Garcia scores, or Alex Garcia, I'm going to butcher his name because it's Catalan. Uh, he got his a beautiful goal. But then they got to, they got lucky with two on goals. <laughs> yeah, Athletic Club was just gifting. <laughs> in this game. Yeah, I mean, you make your own luck, right, with yeah. getting penalties in most cases and with on goals because you put the pressure, so yeah, I mean, the angles are kind of silly too. <laughs> yeah, I think like we mentioned this last week. Like, if you're looking for entertainment in La Liga, like you don't go to Barcelona's. You're going to get one zero every game. You go to Girona, like you're guaranteed three, four, five goals a game, and they they prove that again. Mm-hmm. True, they're the team to watch in the league, and you know, I. I kind of feel bad that I didn't want them to come up initially just because of my own agenda. But, you know, <laughs> when your team is good, you have to put your agenda aside. <laughs> yeah, you, you really have to. And with Alex Garcia, like, this, he shouldn't stay in Girona next season. Like, he should be at Sevilla or Atletico or one of those teams. Yeah, the problem is I, I'm not sure if the that, like, mid-table tier will actually go for him because he's one of the ones that might end up going back to Bad City or something like that. Yeah, he's going to be on a free next um, in the summer. So. Oh, is he actually free in the summer? Yeah. Oh. They have to. Like, they have to convince him not to renew his contract. Oh, that changes everything now. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, if I'm, like, a mid-table club right now, I would have been offering him easily. Because they can basically double his salary. To be honest, I won't mind him at Barca. <laughs> Anything over seeing Roberto in midfield. <laughs> yeah. But, no, this is not a slight on Roberto. It's just you, you can do better. Yeah, you, you can really do better. Speaking of Sevilla, and I'm going to talk about the two games together. Uh, Sevilla, they lost to Osasuna for the first time in 17 years. And Abde, man, he... He scored against them earlier in the Copa del Rey and he had to be the one to break their hearts again. Yeah. Osasuna have now beaten Sevilla three times this season. <laughs> yeah, they, they own them. Yeah, they own them. Yeah. And, and a word on Osasuna, they're the only team involved in the Copa del Rey fixtures this week that actually won. Hmm. 
and their opponents are athletic clubs. So how do we see this going? Because this is this going to be fascinating. Yeah, and first legs that El Sadar, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, given the fact that Unai Simon is injured, Nico Williams is injured, some other players for Athletic Club are injured and might not make that game. And this obviously good result. You have to kind of fancy us sooner, especially given the home advantage. And the fact that they haven't been to a cup semi-final since, what, 2005. It's really going to mean a lot to them. And I actually felt like before this game, their league form suffered because of said cup run. So, yeah, I feel there's a real opportunity for them to do some damage ahead of the second leg. Yeah, there really is. And after seeing the way Athletic Club gifted those goals against Girona, maybe <laughs> maybe they're thinking maybe this might be our year. Um, a word on Sevilla. They scored two outrageously good goals, but... The Gedeli goal. Yeah, <laughs> like this guy is doing goal of the season. <laughs> Go of the season competition with himself. All of his goals. Oh, <laughs> God, that's right. I, I think this one was the best one just because the goalkeeper was absolutely rooted to the spot. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, I'll actually go for the one against Betis because of the, the level of the game. And to do that it would have been crazy. And the thing with Goodelli is that after, after he scored that amazing goal, he almost scores a, a different goal that's like almost out, as outrageous, man. Yeah, I think what the chance like right at the end or yeah, 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 that, that one he almost got that as well. That's like a Cristiano Ronaldo in his prime level goal. <laughs> yeah, and the necessary one, the way he just bamboozled. The yeah, that was a really good. He's he's confident again. I'm, yeah. I'm uh, actually he's playing for his job. <laughs> 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 he's like Sabios, like he wants to stay at the club he's at. So you know, uh, oh, but to be fair to him. He, he has a good record against us as soon as too, so yeah. that's another thing. But yeah, the footwork for our goal was really good, and it's not something you'd expect from him after some of the things we saw him do last year. Yeah, he's a, he's a very clumsy player. But like, exactly, he's like he slip over. He's like he he's like fatty. He's, he was like fatty. He's now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm resting my boy too much. True, true. But like you can roast San Paoli because what was he thinking in the first half with his selection again? Like, what does he like, think you know, every game? Uh, man? I, I don't I don't know because when, when when you see how much the team improves in the second half, you're like, boy, you really messed up in the first half. And then he makes a weird substitution with Teas coming over Fernando, and in the goal, you could tell that if Fernando was there, Abde's goal wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say that San Paoli's reasoning for taking Fernando off was that he scored an own goal because that would be that would be too stupid. But <laughs> you know, sometimes with San Paoli, you never know. Yeah, you never yeah. know. Like his decisions today, like or I'm sorry, yesterday cost his team the results, in my opinion. Because I feel mm. this like this was an it was achievable given the fact that Osuna arrested lots of players. And also the fact that Osuna has never won in Sevilla since like 2005 or 2006. And so this was, had the win written all over it, but like he made errors as well. Yeah. Yeah. But luckily for him, Sevilla got Fenerbahce in the Europe League last 16. So they might be the only Spanish team left or all of them might be out. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you also said that will join. They'll go yeah. Through. Yeah, if they get their act together, they'll go through. Betis have... They're facing a team on another level. I think Betis go out, yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. I worry for. You also said they're facing a team that's kind of like... Same with them. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we shall see. And now let's move on to Celta Vigo. My boy, Gabby Vega. Like, I like him because I used to be so far behind in the market fantasy league. <laughs> <laughs> But ever since he started scoring, I'm like back to like I'm like eighth out of fifteen. <laughs> Where am I in the league? I think you're tenth, man. Oh. Yeah, I used to I used to be tenth. But the thing with Celta is we've always spoken about how they lack a replacement for Iago Aspas, and now this boy comes in and he's already scored eight goals. I really like him because when I was young, I used to be a big fan of Frank Lampard. So I like players who midfielders who can come from He's behind. Goal scoring goal. midfielders, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really like them. And I see him and I see something similar to that. And I hope Salsa can keep him. I've heard his release clause is forty million, but like they like he's the breakout star of the league at the moment. Yeah, he really is. And the thing with his goals is that 
He doesn't just score goals in volume. He scores lots of quality goals too. Yeah. Like he's he's another player that like Goodell is doing goal of the season competition with himself. Yeah, and just his arrival in the box, like he arrives at the right time, mm -hmm. and I like he he could be a real franchise player. And I I feel for Salta, it's I I don't know whether they have to lose Bryce Mendes, but I I can't imagine it if Bryce Mendes was there, combined combined with Gabby Vega, combined with Aspas. Maybe they'll be fighting for something else or for something more. But at the same time, maybe the absence of Bryce Mendes is what is the causation behind Gabriel Vega's you know, explosion. Yeah. But in any case, he's doing a good job of replacing Dennis. So. Yeah, he really is. And I'll say with Salsa, the one thing I, I, I would say is I really like Chacha Kode. He was one of my favorite managers, but I think Sacking him was possibly a really good decision from the Celta boss, um, from Celta's position, because since Cavallal has come in, I feel he's been really good. And I know, Taps, you always, you, you, one of your complaints about the league is like sometimes some managers lack fresh ideas, but mm -hmm. with Cavallal, he's brought in some <laughs> fresh ideas into the league. It's actually great that you brought this up because I was going to say the first thing I need to do is apologize to <laughs> Carvajal <laughs> because. <laughs> As soon as they hired him, I wrote him off because, again, these old same managers just being recycled in the league. But to his credit, he's a, he's been able to get Celta playing really well. And they're actually playing slightly. They're not getting better results than they were under Kudet, but they're playing better, actually, than they were under Kudet. Yeah, so I, I will give him that credit. Yeah, what I like about them is the amount of shots they take. And that's something I criticize a lot of La Liga clubs for is that they don't take, like, with Celta, you can say they're not effective, and I feel that will come with time, but it's just they take a huge volume of shots. They always create some chances, and that's what makes them so exciting to watch, rather than some, some teams might play more uh, tiki-taki, but they don't really get the shots. Uh, yeah. Barcelona. <laughs> I think, I think... <laughs> no, 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 we're not... Come on, give us some respect. We're, we're <laughs> bad for... We're bad by our standard, not by... Anyway... Sorry, right, get, get back to your one zeros. Taps come. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the one zeros are a result of inefficiency. That's a different problem. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, I think, yeah, with Celta, one thing they do really well, they're very aggressive, like you're saying, with the shooting. They'll always keep you on your toes. They'll that's test your defense no matter what. And that's a good thing for teams to have because, again, yeah. from a neutral perspective, you want to see these entertaining games. You don't. Of course, you enjoy like possession styles or more defensive styles, but you want to see these teams that are just heavily proactive because like some managers will get frustrated. Like some of the shots are wasteful. Like they're clearly <laughs> just like hopeful attempts, but they're always looking to just test the goalkeeper, test the defense, time after time after time again. Our boy Carlos yeah. Perez, who thinks <laughs> exactly what I was going to see. <laughs> oh, but but you never know, like with taps with this like thing, like with Barcelona going back to Barcelona Madrid fighting for the title, or maybe it's a small fight right now. But I, I think Barcelona the last game was against Salta at at Valencia. Yeah, the last game was against Salta. So. Yeah, so so I have some hopes. Taps, have some hopes. You know? Oh no, I t I told you, like I said, if I only well, I, I'm not giving the title up, but I think it's only game on if we can get the margin to within three points. So if we can't get that margin to three points. Barca's wanted, but if it just gets cut down to three, then it's game on. Yeah. Well, the good news from Celta's perspective is like the, from what I see, saw with Relevo, they're planning on increasing Gabri Vega's clause. There are lots of clubs interested in from in Germany and in England, but Celta, they don't want to, sell, they don't want to cash in, but you never know the right amount of money might turn their heads. Like if, if they sell for 80 million, no one's going to like tell them they did wrong or yeah i think <laughs> like with bryce mendes they, they, they'll, they'll have a price to cash sure. but, but bryce mendes is so cheap though like from from what he's done some for 14 oh, he's done. Oh, yeah best bargain, cheap. best bargain transfer for the yeah. season but yeah let, let's see how well Celta does in the season but cadiff they played against Rayo Vallecano and Sergi Guardiola. He scored against his former club. Uh, Taps, you didn't like the jersey, the kits at, at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, these, uh, I actually don't know why they're. <laughs> it's actually for Cadiz. I found out why Cadiz did because of Carnival. 
Oh, for us, I have yeah. absolutely no idea why they just did it, but yeah, I, they need to post their reason. But Cardiff, <laughs> their reason was Carnival. Yeah, oh, I see. But but Cardiff, their, their home record is incredibly strong. Yeah, I think they're what unbeaten in nine at home or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's that's insane. And when you think of the fact that their last home loss was the four zero to Barcelona. And at that point, we all had Cadet going down, like we all expected them to be there, but they just never said never, and they kept on going. They just yeah. keep coming back like cockroaches. <laughs> oh, it's, it's annoying. <laughs> and this is the thing, I'll give them their credit because they are now playing a lot better football, but yeah. I always worry that, you know, they're one result away from going back to that pure <laughs> defense <laughs> football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and are you excited for the Alejo versus Vinicius Derby taps? <laughs> I'll be there no matter what. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, Real Madrid no, no, no. are definitely dropping for it today. <laughs> Alejo's like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back with something. <laughs> <laughs> he might lose 4-0, but he's going to get the attack with his baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I did think like... They, Cards is coming back at Kirkwitches, especially at home, is what's going to keep them up. Because unlike most other teams down there, prior to this week's result, they were the only team that were really heading in a positive direction along with maybe Celta. So yeah, I do think they have it in them to just stay up. I mean, That's I prefer good. some other clubs staying up ahead of them. Like us? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You guys. Even at Taffy, because now... Yeah, true. Sure, you like it. But it's gonna take. It seems like this season is gonna take a huge volume of points to stay up because mm-hmm. you look at the relegation battle and it's there's six points between uh, by the lead or down there at the moment and uh, um, yeah by the lead and uh, actually not by the lead isn't there but like Valencia is there seven points between Valencia and Girona twenty three points after twenty three games I believe like we're looking mm-hmm. at. 40 points to stay up at the at this moment. The 33 points won't be enough. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm still surprised how Valencia got dragged into this. But... Yeah, they just like slept walking to it. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. they were like playing so many cup competitions. So you didn't really. So like they'd win a cup game, lose a league game. You wouldn't really notice like that until. Yeah. Boom, you're like, wait, what are we doing here? Yeah, after the Cadet loss, I was like, yeah, that's what I was like. We're, we're, in, we're in it. <laughs> And we were dragging like some of our boys into it, but another the, another team apart from Cadiz that got a good result was Espanyol, Matthew Brightway. He he's showing up. He scored more goals in twenty twenty three than Robin Lewandowski. Huh? Yeah, I said that he wasn't doing wasn't doing too well recently, <laughs> but I didn't think it was this bad. <laughs> no, but my uh, aside, we have to give Bridget his credit. He's really adapted well in Espanyol, and he's stepped up when. Hustle has been injured, which is something I know I've been asking other Espanol for us to do because how can you, if you have a man with 11 goals and you're in the relegation zone, there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But with this relegation battle, it's like a few weeks you feel like you're safe, like Sevilla, and then mm-hmm. the next week you're 2.9. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're back in it. Right. Drew and now could just lose 4 0 next week and they're like, oh, here yeah. we go again. Yeah, all, all it takes is a bad run, like a three or three game winner streak, and you're back in there. But with Espanol, I, I feel they're finally playing the way we all expected them to play when Diego Martinez was hired as coach. And now it's bearing some fruit, but like we'll see how well they can keep up this up. Yeah, it's to be seen. I don't know. I have a theory that maybe the play better without Hossado. Mm. It sounds crazy, but we've seen this so many times where one player in a team is scoring so many goals, but the rest of the team is just dead around him. So, yeah, yeah, maybe there, oh, sorry. there could be something in it. Yeah, there could be, there could be something. Maybe Hossado being there is just like not allowing the rest of the players to re- fully express themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You might be onto something because when also lose there, they use him as the main focal point. It's like the other attackers always refer to him first. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see the results when when he starts again. 
Yeah, and another player who started, and maybe that's why they they got the win was Sergio Montes. Whenever he's been there, Espanyol looks a much more better team when they're not relying on Sergio Gomez and Cabrera, Dumb and Dumber. Tridul <laughs> 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 yeah, they they really got it. They really have a competent defender in Montes. So, yeah. and with Mallorca, we have to speak about them a bit. Murici scored an absolute golazo, but. Mallorca at home and Mallorca away from home are two different beasts. It's like Almeria at home, Almeria away from home. And Cadiz at home, and Cadiz away from home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, the goal was really, really good. And to be fair to Mallorca, they did have a good, it was a pretty good game. Like they did their best to try and get into it. And I feel this was one of their better away performances. But they yeah, still they lost. could have actually got the draw because the the second goal was just a giveaway. So yeah, yeah. one of those. <clears throat> yeah, and I th- I think that settles it for our La Liga conversation. Do we want to talk about what went on in the Champions League? Uh, with some of the games that we saw that didn't involve. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Napoli and uh, Ozeman. I I nicknamed him Nigerian Holland. They're gonna win Serie A most likely, but like. They have a chance in the Champions League too. Yeah, you know, um, they have a two-nil lead against Eintracht Frankfurt, and should they progress, depending on who they get in this in the quarterfinals, you can really see them going to the semifinals. And you know, with this like whole bracketed draw they do these days, that's just that's not top of the NBA. <laughs> yeah, but. If they get lucky with that, or it's not rigged as usual, they could have a good run to the final. Who knows? Yeah. You'd love to see it. Though. Yeah, let's see. Taps, what do you think about... It seems like this is a good season for Italian teams in Europe. Uh, they've struggled so, like, for a long time. Mm-hmm. But, like, we're, we're, we're looking at three Italian teams in the Champions League uh, quarterfinals. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be very good. I think the only one that has to worry is maybe Inter, because Inter is sort of sleepwalking. <laughs> Through, through their games, they're just doing enough. So I think if Inter face any of the other contenders, they'll get knocked out. Uh, and then I think Milan, again, Milan, no one's going to want to face Milan if they get past Spurs, but um, their defense is gettable, although Magic Magnan is back. So oh, nice. That's a game Magic changer. Mike. Yep, that's a game changer for them. And then I think only Napoli. Napoli fears no one right now. Yeah. Napoli will not care who they draw. They will not care what side of the bracket they're on and Napoli will face up to anyone. Yeah, and, and you know what? This um, Champions League somewhat feels like a weaker field compared to last season and that a lot of the teams, there are questions about them. Like there are questions about Chelsea, about Dortmund, about Bayern, yeah. about PSG, even City. Yeah, none. there's no team without a weakness. And that's actually one of the funny things that people were discussing in the Madrid camp is people were like, oh, Madrid were weaker this year, but we might actually have a better chance at winning the Champions League than we did last year, <laughs> given <laughs> the level of the That's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, it's just weird what happens to like all, a lot of the big clubs in Europe. It's like they just picked this year to have... Maybe it's the World Cup. Maybe that's what we're seeing. Maybe that's the trend we're seeing. Yeah, it's possible. We still like This kind of phenomenon hasn't happened before, and we're still... Discovering the effects, you know, with waking up and seeing your star player injured, whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, I feel we might it might get worse in April because that's when like the minutes will accumulate, you know, the emotional toll and whatnot. True, and then we're gonna have a second international break in March. Oh God! Why did you remind me about that? Man? <laughs> that was just the hot bed for more. <laughs> I can't see Pedri getting injured again. <laughs> uh, like, like, I feel the international breaks have been stupid this year because, and I'm sorry for anyone listening, I think that's a harsh word. It's just because we have one right before the World Cup, which I felt could have just been added on to the World Cup to give the players. Yeah, it was pointless. Could have just yeah, given it. It's a point that it ruined the Champions League season. <laughs> and then you have this. Bleep FIFA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We have this one in March where I don't feel we need it. Like if you're going to have a break, all... players need some rest. Like they've been playing all this time and mm-hmm. to play some uh, UEFA Nations League or whatever. I think that's pointless. Yeah, I just just either have them play 
all the club games straight or don't or just give them a rest. Like the yeah. international break is it's an unnecessary risk. True. And with that conversation, I'm going to have to end it. Thank you, Oscar, for always being here. Taps for coming on. Uh, we Thank would love to have you me. next week to discuss the Clasco in the, the first leg. And so if you're, if you're down, come on. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. I'm always happy to come on when I'm free. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. And sounds good to you, listener. And listener, I hope you had enjoyed this conversation.